Welcome, this is the uh, Tennessee Algebra 2 end of course practice test question number 52. The question says which expression is equivalent to y to the one half power over 8x to the four thirds power divided by x to the one third times y to the five over second power divided by six. Now there's a couple things that you have to understand. The first part is how to set up the problem. Now think back to like fifth or sixth grade whenever you had um, dividing fractions. You have to keep the first fraction, flip the second fraction, and then you're going to switch the sign to multiply. So I'm going to write that out just so I get a nice visual. I'm going to keep the first one. I'm going to change the sign to multiply, but the nice thing about the way that it's set up is because I have two fractions, I can just extend the fraction line and just write the new stuff on the same line. That way I can see that it's all together. Because once you multiply, you can put them next to each other. So the 6 pops up to the top in this case. Then I'm going to flip over the x to the 1 third and y to the 5 over 2. Now, the next thing I have to think about is how I deal with exponents. And if you use the order of operations, the first section of course would be parentheses and then exponents and then multiply and divide and then add and subtract and by the way uh, division can come first it's left to right once you get down to this uh, third row or the second row from the bottom whatever you want to call it say with add and subtract subtraction is not worse than add no matter what add tells you but the reality is here we're dividing the numbers so my coefficients or my integer numbers the regular numbers I'm dividing them because it's got a dividing line that's what the fraction means I always like to think of exponents as feeling like they're a little bit better than um, a little bit better than the integers are. So when I'm multiplying the integers, I'm going to do the exponents feel like they're so much better, so you can't touch them with that multiply. They're too good to be multiplied. You have to do one less. It's like they can't be. Uh, it's like you can't reach them with multiply. So you have to reach up further, and all you can hope for is to throw an add up there somewhere. So when I multiply my numbers together, I'm going to add my exponents. In this case, we're going to divide our numbers and then we're going to subtract our um, fraction or our fraction exponents in this case so we're going to subtract our exponents let's look at the numbers first that might make things a little easier uh, I've got six and eight well if I reduce six over eight as a fraction it gives me three over four so any situation that doesn't have a three over four in it is probably wrong so J is probably wrong the reason that J is put, was put there, by the way, is simply because of the fact that the 6 is on the bottom. So if you forget to flip it over, it's going to be a problem for you on the test. Because they're going to be like, ha, 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 we got you. They're always trying to trick you on this thing. It's, all, it's almost like it's not really about the math, and it's just about seeing if they can get you to bite at the wrong answer. Now, the next thing I need to do is see if I have anything on the top of the bottom that I can combine. As you can see on the bottom here, I have X's. And since they're on the same side, that means uh, the same side of the fraction line, it means that we're multiplying them together. And as I said before, if we multiply the numbers in front, which would be 1 times 1, um, we're going to add the exponents. So I'm going to add 4 thirds and uh, 1 third, which last time I checked would be 5 thirds. And I'm going to keep it on the bottom. I like to circle it wherever it's going to stay is where I like to circle it. So I'm going to end up with x over, or x raised to the 5 thirds power. So I've got that thing going for me. Then I'm just going to look at my y's, because everything else I have addressed it. I'm just dealing with y's. Now, one, in this situation, they're dividing the numbers. 1 divided by 1 would give you 1, so that's kind of an irrelevant point. But I am going to subtract my exponents. I need to find which one is bigger and circle it just mentally. That's what I like to do. 5 over 2 is greater than 1 over 2. So I know that my y answer is going to go on the bottom, because that's where the circle is. It makes it easier for me to see. Now. To do my subtraction, I do 5 halves minus 1 half. Well, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. So that's going to bring down y to the second power. And since my circle's on the bottom, so goes my um, variable on the bottom. So I'm looking for 3 over 4 times x to the 5 thirds times y to the second power, which is, of course, G. The nice thing about this is really you could have eliminated F and J early on because they don't have uh, three fourths in it. I'm trying to figure out what they think is confusing about um, H. Um, I guess it's it's got the four over nine thing, but I think that's if they they think you multiply them. Oh, I guess it's if you multiply the exponents. I think they think that's going to trick you or something. But you're not going to be fooled by that, right? You know that if they're on the same side and you're multiplying the numbers, exponents are so much better. So all you can do is hope to add them. So 
four thirds and uh, one third gives you five thirds. Five over two is bigger than one over two, so uh, subtract and put the two on the bottom. Gives you your answer, which is of course g. So good luck on this one. It's not really that complicated. It's kind of an algebra one thing, but the fractions can be a little bit weird.